continually transfer the quarterbacks from one to another. They like this guy because he scrambles. The reason he hits Chris Stelzer here in the end zone, Michigan was playing a zone. Everybody went to sleep. Michigan led by two at halftime. The Illini defense tough, but the punt coverage team a breakdown. And Imani Toomer gets some nice blocking, weaves his way 72 yards to the end zone. And Michigan showing the resiliency. Going into Champaign, a very tough place to play, a place that will test Penn State later in the season. But the Wolverines win it by five. And Illinois, a second, con trying to hold on against Ole Miss, a game delayed by lightning and rain. Do Innocent takes the ball up the middle to the Alabama nine-yard line. He scored from two yards out. Three plays later, it was 7 nothing. Then the rains and the lightning came. The game was held up for 25 minutes. When they resumed, Sherman Williams gets in the end zone. 10-7, Rebels still led by a field goal. Then, early fourth quarter, the field goal is good, but... A very shaky call here. The Ole Miss man shoved into Michael Proctor. They throw the flag, giving Alabama a first and goal. Wow. Momentum changed. Alabama takes the lead. Barker, tough yards. He gets in the end zone. That made it 14-10. They added a late touchdown. 21-10 as Alabama goes to 8-0. Remaining schedule for the Tide at LSU, at Mississippi State, and in the Iron Bowl with Auburn in Birmingham. It's in Fort Collins. This is back to the old time whack days, a wild one. Charlie Brown breaks free, 44 yards into the end zone, 22-17 Utes in the third quarter. Two point conversion try here. They go for two, the zero formation. They spread them out, seven men on the line of scrimmage. Total confusion at Colorado State. Mike McCoy, he's a savvy guy. He'll take advantage of it. Colorado State had no way to prepare for this formation. An easy toss to Rob Hamilton, made it 24-17. Then on the next drive, it goes for a touchdown attempt. They do the same thing, spread formation. Colorado State, they've seen one thing, they're expecting the same thing again. This time, McCoy will find a different player. Colorado State tries the blitz from the left side. Rick Tucker, touchdown, 31-17, Utah at that point. Love that formation zero, that's what they call it. But Sonny Lubick's team cut it to 31-29 trying for the two-point conversion. Anthony Hill shows the mobility, flips it out there. It's Justin Schell tying the game at 31. Back from the Utes, next possession, McCoy, Curtis Marsh, touchdown, 38-31 Utes. They're trying to run out the score. Colorado State's on the Utah 40-yard line inside of two minutes to play on fourth down, trying to prolong the drive get to the end zone and perhaps win the game with a two-point conversion. It is old-time vintage whack. We'll keep you posted on that one. Washington and Oregon. Jim Lambright's team looking for a big day for Napoleon Kaufman. Answers the coach right here, a 37-yard run, but the Ducks did a pretty good job of containing Kaufman on the afternoon. And the Oregon offense would answer. Ricky Whittle in the house for a three-yard touchdown. Ducks led 14-3, late fourth quarter. After the Huskies took a three-point lead, Dwayne Jones caps a 98-yard Oregon drive. They go up 24-20. Huskies last chance. Damon Hewitt to Bjornsson, out of bounds, keeps the drive alive. But under a minute to go, Hewitt picked off by Kenny Wheaton. Tight ropes down the far sideline. Poor effort attacking by the Husky offense. He takes it back 98 yards in Oregon. A sweet win as they snap a five-game losing streak against the Huskies. <laughs> yeah, rub it in. You deserve to rub it in when you oh, pull yeah. off that kind of an upset. As the Ducks improve to five and three, they're definitely thinking bold. Elsewhere in the Pac-10, UCLA and Arizona, Wildcats wanting payback after the Bruins embarrassed them a year ago. Richard Dice had a big day there. Dan White looks deep, finds Dice. 60 yards on the play. The game was tied 7-7 after a quarter. Tick Tomey, the only coach to wear sunglasses on a backwards baseball cap. White looking to dice again. Eight-yard touchdown comes down hard on the hip. Arizona up 14-7. Dice, six catches, 138 yards, and a couple of bruises. So White looks for someone else and finds Lamar Harris, the 12-yard touchdown, 14 of 21. 211 yards for White as Arizona uncharacteristically gives up 24 points for the outscore the Bruins to up the record to 6-1. and one. Nebraska started slow against Missouri. Don't pick a fight with Herbie the Husker, not when you're the Missouri Tigers. Scoreless game in the second, Lawrence Phillips, five-yard touchdown. And the Husker fans who made the trip love it, although Nebraska sluggish offensively, 
Another good effort from the black shirt defense. Meanwhile, Brooke Barringer playing hurt to Brendan Holbein for the touchdown, and Nebraska would pull away, win it comfortably, move to 8-0, and set up the showdown with Colorado in Lincoln next week. Barringer, second quarter. McNair needing just 15 yards for the record. Over the middle to Donald Ross. There's the record. No, it's not the record. Donald dropped the ball. McNair's mother can't believe it. She'll have to wait. But on the next play, McNair does it with the legs. The 22-yard scramble. He passes Detmer. 14,665 total yards for his career. Congratulations all around, but now the matter of winning the ball game. And Southern had a lead in the fourth quarter by three points. McNair going up top for Robert Hinton. How do you let the guy get deep when you're protecting a lead? Down to the one yard line. And then McNair shows the leg strength, gets it on the quarterback sneak, 41-37. He is the one Heisman candidate not shy about striking the pose. An incredible day for McNair. 587 yards, four touchdowns, rush for 62 yards and a touchdown. And after all that, still have the energy to talk about the potential game-winning touchdown and conversion. But Harold Lusk, the converted quarterback from last year, now playing safety, picks it off. He's going to run all the way. Back to Utah. And the Utes, why not dance? They are still unbeaten and disappointing Afternoon for Anthony Hill, the first loss for the Rams, 44-31 with 51 seconds to play in the ballgame. We'll keep you posted and get this game final as soon as it's completed. Seeing loss last year, scoreless game in the first quarter. Frank Costa to Chris T. Jones, who beats him deep easily. They missed the point. It was 6-0. 12-0 in the second. Costa looking deep again. Yatiel Green, a freshman with a big future in front of him, makes the circus catch. Canes. Rolling over West Virginia, Frank Costa, an impressive outing, 14-29, to 266 yards, a couple of touchdowns. It was 25-0 at halftime. Miami getting it 24-0. Hokies and Antonio Freeman gets the punt. Shows some nice moves. Guys right on him right away. Jukin takes it back. 80 yards for the score. First visit by the Panthers ever to Blacksburg. They never want to go back. The Hokies have won 10 straight in Lane Stadium, upping the record to 7-1. and one. They sacked Pittsburgh quarterbacks six times. It's the best start for the Hokies since 1967, and they have the Hurricanes next week. Bob Rossley's Mustangs trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Texas without four starters injured, but they did have Roderick Walker. Takes the handoff, 48 yards, gets in the house. His second of the day, longest run of his career. SMU falls 42-20. to 20. James Brown, 5 of 7, 83 yards, and he had a touchdown. UNC and Virginia, bad blood in the series. Virginia continues to dominate the Tar Heels at Scott Stadium. Mike Groh, starting for Simeon Willis, finds Tyrone Davis. Two plays later, Groh to Davis. He earned it. Second touchdown catch, 10-0 Virginia at that point. Then it was 17-0. They've got such a strong running game. If it wasn't for this run that took them down to the three-yard line, they were completely out of it. They did score later on that drive. Yeah, Henderson got in the end zone, but in the second half, Stanisak picked off by James Ferrier. Carolina turnovers killed him. Virginia very opportunistic. That led to another touchdown. Then Grove puts it away to Davis one more time, the 35-yarder. 34-10, Virginia owns the Tar Heels in Scott Stadium. They own him pretty much anywhere in the last dozen years. Groh had a couple of touchdown passes that you saw there. Meanwhile, Duke trying to remain unbeaten, hammering Wake Forest. Curtis Bunch fumbles. John Zuinich picks it up, takes it the other way, 62 yards. In the first quarter, Duke had 27 points and led 34-6 at halftime. Now to the fourth quarter. Sidney Wells picks off the pass from Joe Pickens. What a grab right there. Takes it back 25 yards. Duke finding all kinds of ways to score points. They have not allowed more than 16 points in any game this year, but that's deceptive because Duke was dominating this game from the very unzip game when Warwick Dunn scoots in for his second touchdown run, 14-0. Same score in the third quarter. Scott Bentley benched after missing two field goals. So in comes Dan Mowry. You got it. Wide right. Bobby Bowden, fortunate that they're not playing a better team than Clemson. Mowry would later redeem himself. The chip shot, a little bit of a sarcastic cheer from him there as he gets it inside the upright. The Knowles, not sharp offensively, but 
Two weeks off, they come back and beat Clemson 17. Beating Bobby Hoying, they would hook up and have a big day. Over the middle, Galloway splits the defenders, 42-yard touchdown. The Buckeyes cruising, Hoying, 20 of 34, 304 yards and five touchdowns. The second quarterback in Ohio State history with five and one game. Between the hedges, shut down in the first half completely, but then Jermaine Johnson busts loose in the third quarter. 78-yard run, cuts it to a 16-7 South Carolina lead. Final two and a half minutes. It's 19-16 now. Tannehill trying to keep the ball, prolong the drive, a diving catch by Boomer Foster for the big first down. From there, they ran out the clock. Four field goals from Morton and a damaging loss for the Commodores' bowl hopes. They were slim anyway. Meanwhile, the Gamecocks thinking bowl now at 5-3. Mississippi State hammers to land. Cartney and Colorado up 14-7 at the half, third quarter. First and goal, J.J. Smith is stopped. It looked good, tough call. Second and goal, Deidre Kelly is stopped. Third and goal, Rod Schiller is stopped. Fourth and goal, a sweep J.J. Smith, and the Colorado D smothers him. Boy, I'll tell you what, Chad may upset and still down 14 to seven. Third quarter, Colorado up. K-State got the ball back on an INT. J.J. Smith takes over. The Emmett and Barry type moves. Touchdown, 30 yards, 14 all. Third quarter, still tied 14. Second and 16. Rashawn, Salam, up the middle, 16 yards. Colorado on top by seven. Fourth quarter, we're tied at 21, first and 10. Cordell Stewart on the keeper, and Cordell motors the speed. One of the best runs of the day, Carl, 60 yards. Colorado wins. Cordell Stewart, 127 yards, three touchdowns. That's my background running the option. When I see a gaping hole, I love it, said Cordell. On Walsh, don't forget about Jamal Willis. Hurdles would be tacklers. Can you bring him down? It's a 32-yard run. He became BYU's all-time leading rusher in the game. Walsh, touch to Bryce Dolman, and he's in. 34-28, BYU has not lost a road game in the WAC since 92. Make it 10 straight. Willis adds to that school record with his 38th touchdown, and as I said, he set the new school record. 136 yards now. Mike Patterson encouraging his Cougars to keep that ranking. Second quarter tied at seven. Chad Davis to Chad Carpenter. Gets the foot down, 21 yards. Cougars up at the half, 14-7. Fourth quarter, the Devils come back. Jake the Snake Patterson hits Amoya Glass. Devils within seven, 28-21. A minute remaining, fourth and goal for the Devils. Dwayne Patterson, Pac-10 sack leader, coming up big. Washington State escapes. The final 28-21. The Cougars now 5-2. Chad Davis, three TDs, an INT, used 11 different receivers. Trojans, Ryan Longwell's field goal, blocked by Gerald Henry. Henry, oh, Henry, picks it up, 61 yards for the score, and the floodgates are open. Second quarter, more special teams play. Lion Longwell's punt taken by Ken Grace. Longwell can't catch Grace. 75 yards later, Tyrone Edwards knocks him out inside the five. A tough day for Ryan Longwell, tough day for Cal. USC rolls 61 0. The margin of defeat was the largest for Cal since a 66 0 loss to Alabama in 73. Hey, Steve.